Hello and welcome to my channel. This is yet another drawing of General Grievous, the famous Star Wars villain from the prequels. And this one is more like a large portrait done in charcoal. The previous one was a little bit different and I'm going to put the link in the end screen and in the description if you want to check that one out as well. First I'm going to do the sketch and uh, like I said this one will be like a large portrait focusing mostly on the face and the head. And the size of the paper is also larger. This one is about 12 times 17 inches. The previous one was about 9 times 12 inches. And um, the good thing about the reference that I chose for this one is that there is a very nice contrast between the light side and the shadow side, which goes kind of down the middle of the, of the face. Um, he has uh, kind of like an angular head. After all, he is uh, some kind of a, a combination of a droid and a living creature. And that uh, that middle line that that goes down the middle of the head or the the middle of the the mask that he is wearing, that's uh, that's going to be the boundary between the light side and the shadow side. There's going to be a nice sharp contrast there. As for the background, I'm just going to use vine charcoal and charcoal powder to create a smooth outer focus background um, that is just dark enough to create some contrast with the lighter portion of, of my main character's head. So. I'm going to start with vine charcoal now that uh, now that the sketch is done, and I'm going to go around the edges. Uh, if the edges don't look clean at first, I don't need to worry about that. I'm going to clean up those edges later using a combination of blending tools and erasers. But of course, it will be very very important for me to have those clean edges because I need to I need to show the viewer where the edge of my main character is and where the background begins so right now when I start blending some of these edges will be a little bit blurry but I'm gonna clean that up later the reason why I'm starting with vine charcoal or willow charcoal I don't know which one it is uh, they're pretty much the same I guess it's a soft natural charcoal. The reason why I'm starting with those willow charcoal sticks is because uh, it's very easy to manipulate, it's easy to move around and you can achieve some painter, painterly effects with it by moving the charcoal around because it doesn't really stick to the surface of the paper quite as much. Now the charcoal powder that I'm going to lay down was created by sharpening one of my charcoal pencils. So this is compressed charcoal and uh, it's uh, it's a little bit darker and it's uh, going to allow me to create some areas of darker value and to create some variation in value in the background to smooth things out I will be adding a bit of willow charcoal here and there as needed I'm blending using a combination of my fingers and brushes um, both are very useful. Your fingers are great blending tools because not only are you able to cover large areas with them, uh, they also allow you to push in the charcoal to create some darker areas. Now I'm cleaning up the edge of the light side of the head and I'm using a combination of erasers for that. The kneaded eraser is good at lifting up charcoal uh, but for precision, for detail, I often use a Kohino pencil eraser. It's like a soft eraser in a wood casing. It can be used like a pencil and sharpened like a pencil. And I, I'm using that and a combination of pencils to clean up the edge. It's going to be very important to stay consistent with the light source. And the light source in this case is coming more from the left side. The left side is going to be the light side of my character and the right side is going to be the shadow side. 
He has some antenna-like or horn-like shapes around that helmet. And I'm adding a bit of texture and some maybe indications of damage and wear and tear on some of the elements of his helmet. I want to uh, make the character a little bit more interesting. That's why I'm going to be adding some random dints, uh, scratches and cracks here and there just to make it look like his uh, gear, his equipment has seen some has seen some fighting has seen some usage also because it's made out of metal there are a lot of these uh, shiny reflective areas so I'm going to need to create a lot of these areas of high contrast here above the eyes or above the eye socket areas there are two uh, trough like shapes don't know what those are and its its eyes or his eyes are um, kind of cat like with those uh, narrow pupils and the skin around them is very dark like he has dark circles around the eyes or something. The helmet or the mask that, it, that he's wearing is very very menacing looking and that's why uh, that's why I think it's a good thing that I'm using uh, that I'm doing such a close-up portrait of this character. The previous drawing was kind of uh, displaying his uh, uh, his four lightsabers and uh, I was trying to capture that violent gesture that menacing gesture but here I'm mostly focusing on the face and uh, the helmet uh, one of the things that always helps me a lot when I'm dealing with something complex is going in and defining some of the darkest bits those darkest areas in between the parts of the body or parts of uh, whatever complex object I'm trying to draw. But I also have to work from left to right uh, because uh, I want to minimize smudging and this is a very large drawing. I am recording top down so I can't have uh, I can't have my paper in a vertical position or anything like that and uh, that's why my hand has to rest uh, on the table and sometimes on the paper and I normally use a piece of glassine paper to prevent smudging so here I have this robe uh, which is a little bit darker than the, than the, than the head and the, and the hand which is in the foreground uh, in the previous drawing he didn't have that robe so here I am also going to use that robe as a background for the hand to create contrast between the uh, the robe and the and the hand the claw whatever it is I'm also playing around with the texture uh, of that of that robe just uh, trying to Try to make the texture look a little bit more rough. I'm probably going to subdue this a little bit with a brush because I I don't want it to be too distracting and I uh, can't really be bothered to create a realistic looking texture of the of the of that cloth. So I'm just going to move on with this hand which has six fingers if I'm not mistaken six nasty fingers and the good thing here like I said is that uh, the robe which is uh, darker but also in the shadow is providing a nice background for that hand to pop out so that we can create a bit more depth in the drawing and it's very important for me to go around each and every one of those fingers each and every one of those digits and 
and clean up the edges. I won't uh, finish that process entirely until later, but right now I'm just going to start working on some of the fingers. And you can see how I'm shading them uh, so that they're obviously not completely white because a part of them is always in the shadow but the upper part of them which is catching some light from the from that light source which is coming from above in the left that that part is always always a little bit darker and by like i said regardless of how much i shade them eventually i have to remember to clean up the edge Also want to make these parts of the hand look a little bit more angular and a little bit thicker. That's why I'm defining some of the edges here on this uh, on this part of the hand, this flat part of the hand. And um, I'm working around the helmet now. There's, there's going to be a few nice shadow areas here uh, in between the hand and the helmet which I plan to use to create more depth. I'm still working on the fingers though. Uh, I'm using a combination of not just my pencils but also that willow charcoal. Willow charcoal is good for shading because you can easily smudge it around. You can move it around easily and create some nice, nice transitions, nice, uh, nice effects. I'm going to do a little bit of erasing with this kneaded eraser. Uh, the reason why a kneaded eraser is sometimes uh, better than the pencil eraser is because it lifts up the charcoal and it can create some very light areas if you didn't press too hard with the charcoal. If you did press with the charcoal then you may need to rub it out using that pencil eraser, that Kohinoor pencil eraser that I'm using and some people also use a Dombo Mono Zero eraser. Uh, but one of the disadvantages of that eraser is that while you're rubbing you can actually rub some of that charcoal into the grain of the paper and it can be very very difficult to remove it. In addition to that, the, the uh, kneaded eraser also doesn't leave any residue. It's just sticky and it picks, uh, picks the dust up, uh, picks the material up. And um, that, that's very useful. But like I said, when you're creating those highlights, those lighter bits, it can have its limitations because uh, it's important not to press too hard if you want to be able to lift up any material. I'm going to start defining the shadow side. And like I said, uh, I like the fact that this helmet is uh, so angular and that we have this line going down the middle of this semi-robotic head. And that really provides a nice edge, a nice contrast between the light side and the shadow side. And you can see how easily I'm moving around that willow charcoal. Just, um, I can keep adding more to make it uh, not so much darker, but a little bit more even to maybe remove some of the texture that I didn't like. But notice how I'm pushing a little bit of that charcoal dust onto the light side as well. Now, you have to push yourself to try to see even some of the lighter values which are barely visible. Because sometimes something that seems almost completely white isn't white. And this is especially the case when you when you're doing black and white drawings. Uh, where you don't have colors but you're limited to lighter and darker tones 
And the reason why it was important for me to push at least a little bit of value onto that light side is because within the light side we're also going to have some variation in value. So for example if you look at that area um, around the opening uh, uh, around the eye there's a lighter bit there which is facing directly towards the sun uh, towards the light sorry towards the light source and is um, lighter than the rest of that light side and if you look at some of the cracks on the dome on the on that forehead area if you will um, there will be some some bits of those cracks some some uh, surfaces there which will be facing towards the light source and which will be a little bit lighter than the rest of that surface so even though I've defined that contrast between the light side and the shadow side while I was shading the shadow side I still used a little bit of that dust that was on my brush I used a little bit of the dust to push it onto the light side and that reduced my contrast a little bit but that's okay because uh, you will still the, the dark side will still be darker than the light side but the light side can't remain completely completely white so you always have to kind of push yourself to understand those subtle differences in value and that can sometimes be very very difficult um, this softer brush is a bit better for the for blending with vine charcoal and willow charcoal I find that these uh, harder bristle brushes they tend to push the charcoal a little bit into the paper making everything a bit darker so you can use that to your advantage depending on what you're trying to achieve sometimes you may want to make something a bit darker push the willow, willow, willow charcoal a bit more into the paper make some darker values sometimes you just want to move it gently over the surface of the paper it's up to you uh, now I'm cleaning these lighter bits on, on this uh, I don't know uh, what this is around the mouth, this uh, speaker area, I guess. So I want to make it look like it's made out of metal and uh, uh, the, the, the top bit of, of those parts is reflective. So I'm leaving that lighter and if I accidentally cover it with some charcoal, I just clean it up with a kneaded eraser. Uh, now I'm using a pencil eraser to draw some lighter lines next to these darker lines and uh, notice how I'm drawing this lighter line on the right side of this darker line of this darker crack or opening because that's the that's the portion of that surface which is going to be facing the light source so I th there are so, so many of these smaller details that the camera may not be able to pick up on but you can see that in real life these drawings are usually quite a bit more detailed in real life especially when they're a larger size like this one I'm not trying to brag or anything but my drawings do look better in real life and I believe that's usually the case with uh, with all of your, all of your drawings as well that's something I noticed even when I was using uh, when I was taking photos w with a decent quality camera uh, when I wasn't recording videos um, they just the drawings were always just a little bit more detailed there were always some subtle textures and uh, values there that the camera just couldn't pick up on not really sure why, why but that's the way it was but I never used some high-tech equipment anyway I'm just adding some uh, bits here and there some cracks and dints and uh, scratches and things like that just to make some um, suggestions or indications of damage maybe this is a violent character that's probably been through some uh, through some conflicts battles so I want to make uh, I want to add some suggestions of wear and tear some suggestions of damage here and there and it will make this relatively smooth metallic surface a bit more interesting uh, onto the other eye 
So uh, the eyes are kind of interesting. I honestly have no idea uh, what this character is supposed to look like without uh, without the helmet. As I've already explained, I, I, I think this is some kind of a mixture of a, of a living creature and a droid. Um, he may have he may have sustained some damage to his body, lost some body parts, kind of like Darth Vader and even Luke Skywalker who lost his hand. So he has some mechanical parts, but, but this character obviously has a, a greater percentage of mechanical parts in his body. Has four hands, two of which are hidden and can be kind of... Uh, uh, deployed as needed and two of them are sticking out from out from out of this rope and he can wield four lightsabers so it's an interesting character design but like I said I don't really know much about the background of the character uh, the species or what, what the what he is supposed to look like without this mask or without this helmet all I see is these dark circles around the eyes which make him look both uh, kind of menacing but at the same time I don't know a little bit tragic I guess and there are some reflective shiny bits on that skin around the eyes and of course, the eyes themselves, they're uh, spherical shapes. So you have to shade them accordingly uh, with, uh, with the darker areas around the edges, uh, where, which are facing away from the, from the direction of the light source and a highlight or a catch light, which is closer to the, or, uh, facing the, the light source. There are some smaller metallic shiny bits here on the sides of the face and then some um, headphone like structures on the sides of the head where the ears are supposed to be and then these antenna or horn like structures on the sides of the head I don't really have a clue what each and every one of those are and chances are maybe even the the artist who designed the character didn't really know but that's neither here nor there the important thing here for me is to make sure that the edges on the right side as well are clean in relation to the background in the top right And I'll get to that eventually. Um, I don't know if I said a word or two about my materials. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I'm using coin or charcoal pencils and uh, coin or silky black pencils. Those are the pencils which I'm using. The paper I'm using is about 200 GSM. Um, smooth drawing paper about 12 times 17 inches in size. Some people sometimes ask me about the materials. I don't think they are particularly important. Naturally you could do this same thing with graphite, it's just that I think the charcoal is a lot faster to work with. Graphite does have some of its advantages, but charcoal is usually a lot faster. Especially when you need to draw some of these darker areas and when you need to make transitions between uh, some dark areas and some lighter areas. That's where, that's where charcoal really excels. So if you've been following my channel you know that I've done quite a few Star Wars related drawings 
I'm not a super fan of Star Wars or anything, it's just that I often do these commissions. I think I've explained on a number of occasions that I'm only a fan of the original trilogy. You know, the funny thing is that I, I normally don't like sequels of any kind. There are some exceptions, of course. Uh, like the Pirates of the Caribbean, for example, but I normally don't like sequels. Now, recently, uh, the fourth Matrix came out, I think. Naturally, I didn't watch it, and uh, I have no intention of watching it. Uh, but the interesting thing is that I only uh, watched the original, the first Matrix movie. I simply refused to watch the other two when they came out. And similarly, I refused to watch the fourth one as well. And as for the prequels, I think I, I've seen them, uh, or at least most of them. Um, I have definitely seen The Phantom Menace and at least a bit of the other two. I haven't seen uh, some of the newer movies. But like I said, I mostly like the original trilogy. If people find prequels entertaining, I'm okay with that. They weren't bad movies, it's just that it's not really, not really my cup of tea. I'm going to need to work a little bit more with charcoal powder here at the bottom. There's going to be some darker areas where I don't really want too much texture and plus charcoal powder is a quicker way for me to cover these large areas. I'm, again, I'm going to use a combination of charcoal powder, some willow charcoal and naturally my charcoal pencils. I'm going to need charcoal pencils for the areas where I need a little bit more precision, especially uh, especially around the hand, all the way on the on the left. Uh, but it's almost done. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos, and don't forget to give me a like and comment. And if you want to see more content and longer videos, you should definitely check out my Patreon, because if you like drawing. And if you want to see some real-time and full-length videos, you'll find some interesting stuff there. I'm going to put my signature somewhere in the lower right corner. And I hope you like this drawing. It's a very large drawing. I enjoyed making it. Not some nice contrast there. A very interesting character to draw. I'm just moving it around so that I can show all of it to you. So once again I hope you'll like it and thanks for watching. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye for now.